On today's episode, I'm back following the holiday weekend, and I'll be breaking down all nine of the selections that the Blackhawks made during day two of the NHL draft. All that and plenty more right here on Locked On Blackhawks. Your Locked On Blackhawks, your daily podcast on the Chicago Blackhawks. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, everyone? Welcome on in to another episode of Lockdown Blackhawks, part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day. Today is Wednesday, July 5th. I'm your host, Jack Bushman. Find me out on Twitter at Jack Bushman2, or you could also go and check out my Strictly Blackhawks account at Talk and Hockey for all the latest Blackhawks news and updates. And real quick, just a reminder to subscribe to the YouTube channel. That's 100% free. If you're an audio listener, you can follow the show 100% for free wherever you may be listening to your podcast as well. Make sure to go and do that real quick. I'd greatly appreciate all the support as I'm closing in on 1,000 subscribers on YouTube. And also that way, you can get the latest episode as soon as it becomes available each and every day. All right. What's up, everyone? Good afternoon. Thank you all, as always, for joining me on another episode of Lockdown Blackhawks, your one-stop shop for all things Chicago Blackhawks. And thank you all for making the show your very first listen here to start off your day. As I mentioned during the intro, I'm back following the holiday weekend. Hope everyone out there enjoyed the 4th of July. I know I, I certainly did. And uh, I know that it's been a couple of days now since I've posted an episode. I haven't uh, broken down all of the picks that the Blackhawks made during day two of the 2023 NHL draft. That's obviously what I'm going to be doing on today's show. Um, but I just wanted to say I really did need kind of a, a little bit of a step away after going really hard for the 2023 NHL draft, breaking down a ton of prospects, uh, doing uh, draft rankings, a mock draft, everything that came with it along with having a busy week with the golf coverage that I do as well. Uh, just not a lot of sleep, a lot of time spent on social media and grinding in the past couple of weeks. So uh, with the holiday weekend having passed, I kind of took that time to get a little bit of a, a breather and, and start fresh and uh, kind of re-energize myself going into this week. And it was quite honestly much needed. On Monday, I think I slept for like 14 hours. It was uh, a long and eventful holiday weekend following an even busier and longer week. So I apologize for not getting into uh, all of these selections until today. But without further ado, let's stop with the rambling here, huh, Jack? Let's get into all of the selections that the Blackhawks made during an eventful day two of the 2023 NHL draft. We saw them make nine picks. Uh, and they started the day, of course, having four selections in the second round, two selections in the third, two in the fourth as well. So a plethora of draft picks. And the first selection that the Blackhawks had on day two was at number 35, the third selection in the second round. And they wound up taking the first goaltender off of the board. And Adam Guyan, who was, uh, a, who is, excuse me, a six foot three. 167 pound netminder, 19 years old, a one year overager, but he really rose up the draft boards and kind of got himself onto everyone's radar based on the performance that he had at the World Juniors, where he backstopped Slovakia, uh, past the United States, nearly had them uh, take down Canada as well before. Connor Bedard scored that infamous highlight real goal there at the World Juniors for the overtime winner. But that's really where Adam Guyon kind of showcased his stuff. Um, he played the later part of the season in the United States Hockey League with the Green Bay Gamblers, had a 5-1-0 record there with a 2.48 goals against average, 906 save percentage, and one shutout in six games. He spent the earlier part of the campaign playing uh, with the Chippewa Steel of the North American Hockey League, the NAHL, went 19-12 and won there, 257 goals against the average, 917 save percentage, and one shutout in 34 games. He's actually going to go back to the Green Bay Gamblers for next season, and then the following year he'll join uh, the University of Minnesota Duluth, a program that the Blackhawks and us fans are quite familiar with over these last few years. And as far as uh, kind of the analysis thrown out there about Adam Guyon, I'm going to read this from 
the athletics Corey Pronman, as I'll do with a couple prospects, because I really did just kind of focus on the top 30, the top 40 or so. Guyon was someone that I was familiar with because of the World Juniors. I personally had him ranked as my second goaltender, but again, I didn't really do as much homework on some of these later round picks as I did uh, some of the top end selections. So the analysis on Guyon is he has clear NHL athleticism. He has an explosive lower half with the power to make the toughest lateral saves at higher levels. He's an aggressive goalie, sometimes to a fault as he can take himself out of position too much, but at times it works well. I do think he generally reads the play and anticipates the play well, but he will need to control his slides and aggression against better players. There's a lot of development work left still, but Guyon has a lot of pro potential. And that's the biggest thing that I kind of knew about Guyon is his athleticism, how he can go from post to post and make ridiculous saves. He is a little bit of aggressive goaltender sliding from post to post, sometimes over committing to the puck a little bit, but sometimes like Corey Pronman reference, it does work out in his favor. And we certainly saw that with the performance that he had uh, at the world juniors where he was named the best goaltender in the tournament there. But all in all, as far as uh, Adam Guyon goes, look, it's tough to judge a goaltender at 19 years of age. They're always huge question marks because their development takes so long. They really, in my mind, just need those reps. That's the biggest thing that separates goaltenders from other positions. They just need more reps than everyone. And being 19 years old, look, I'm not going to sit here and act like I know Adam Guyon is going to be a pro, but obviously there's the athleticism and the upside there. And the Blackhawks must have really liked him to use him with the 35th overall selection and to take him as the first goaltender off their board. So they must have really liked what they saw from him at the World Juniors, which quite honestly, is kind of a, a reoccurring theme here based on their day two selections. A lot of guys who performed well at the U18 and the U20 World Juniors. But I mean, this was obviously the guy that the Blackhawks wanted. And for Kyle Davidson with his first three picks of this 2023 NHL draft to get the best player in Connor Bedard, the best skater in Oliver Moore, and in their opinion, the best goaltender in Adam Guyon, Kyle Davidson has to be uh, licking his chops here with this selection. Now, maybe it was a little bit of a reach, but we've kind of seen Kyle Davidson go that route so far here in the later rounds in his two NHL drafts as general manager. And quite honestly, when you get this late, it, it's all about the upside and whether they pan out. And they certainly believe Guyon did so. Did they reach with Adam Guyon here at number 35, you know, potentially, but we really won't know that answer till probably three or four years down the road. I referenced he's going back to Green Bay this season. Then he won't be a freshman with UMD until the 2024-2025 campaign. I'd expect him to spend at least two, if not three to four seasons with the Bulldogs. So we're not going to be seeing Adam Guyon for quite a while, but this adds just even more depth to the Blackhawks goaltender position that already has Drew Comesso, uh, Jackson Stauber, obviously Arvid Soderblom is expected to be the backup next year at the NHL level. Having Adam Guyon in the prospect pool now just kind of solidifies the position a little bit more. And look, are all four of those guys going to be NHL goaltenders? Probably not. But if you can hit on one of those four and they can be the key guy and maybe a, a true difference maker and have that high end ceiling, if one of them becomes that stud goaltender of the future, it's a win for the Blackhawks. I like this pick of Adam Guyon. Maybe they took him a little bit too early, but it was clear that Kyle Davidson really wanted him and they weren't afraid to make him the first goaltender taken off the board. So Adam Guyon was the first Blackhawks selection that they made with the 35th overall pick. Then they were on the clock once again at number 44 and they took forward Roman Kansarov, five foot nine, 176 pounds, 18 years old, out of Russia. He tallied 54 points in 45 MHL games last season, 27 goals, 27 assists. For those out there who aren't familiar, the MHL is uh, the league below the KHL, so not quite the professional, well, not quite the high end professional level of the KHL. It's the next league under, but he's been a point per game player at the MHL level in each of the last two seasons now. And he actually did make his case KHL season debut and could, in fact, be there next season already playing professional hockey at 18, 19 years old. But the, but the biggest part about Kansarov's game is he's a super evasive puck controller, has some really good speed, good vision, good playmaking. And this is also a theme that you're going to see with some of these upcoming picks for the Blackhawks. Good skaters, good offensive upside. 
Um, I really like this pick of Roman Kansarov. A lot of people had him ranked as a later first round selection. There's just a, a lot of uh, skill and speed there and a good shot along with it. As far as Corey Pronman's analysis, Kansarov is undersized at five foot nine, but has a lot of other traits that make you think he will score as a pro. Most important is the way he skates and plays with pace. Sounds like someone the Blackhawks really wanted to add to their system. Kansarov can generate a lot of controlled entries and make plays in transition. Kansarov has very good puck skills, showing great small area skill and the ability to improvise with the puck. He can move the puck well while also being a shot threat from the circles. His size is a concern, though, and while he competes fine and killed penalties in the MHL, I don't know if he's so competitive that it will get him over the hump as a smaller forward to be a regular in the NHL. I think he can get some games, though. And as far as the rankings go, we saw Kansarov ranked as high as number 42 by Craig Button, 51st by the Hockey News, 57th by McKean's Hockey, 68th by the Daily Faceoff, 69th by Bob McKenzie, 72nd by the elite prospects, and then uh, 95th by Chris Peters and 96 by Dauber prospects. So a little bit of a missed back, mixed basket there on Roman Kansarov, but I do love hearing that he can play the game not only at a high pace, but he can kind of improvise and make those quick little reads and transition, those small area skills that Corey Pronman talked about. Uh, there's a lot to like here with Roman Kansarov as well. Now, there's always a concern if slash when he will ever come over from Russia. Kyle Davidson and the Blackhawks have said they weren't really concerned with that narrative about uh, taking any Russians here in the 2023 NHL draft. So that doesn't seem to worry them. And the expectation is that Kansarov is going to go rack up some professional games uh, over in Russia these next few years before he hopefully comes to North America. So another forward added to the group here that can play with some pace, a good puck mover, a decent shot along with it. So a good offensive game here in Roman Kansarov. And again, some people uh, had him going late in the first round. Then the Blackhawks were originally supposed to select with uh, select at number 51 for their third second round selection. They wound up trading that though to the Philadelphia Flyers in exchange for a 2024 second round pick, which is a selection of the Los Angeles Kings, along with pick number 67, a sixth round pick in this year's draft. So kind of just Kyle Davidson adding more fuel to the fire in terms of uh, future draft capital, which I think is always smart. And just continuing to stockpile those draft picks moving forward. And in a, a draft where they already have three seconds, they already had two firsts. I understand Kyle Davidson going this route. And then the Blackhawks were back on the clock at number 55. So they probably also felt who they wanted at 51. Odds are they were going to slide in number 55 as well. And that player wound up being Martin Mishiak, a forward six foot two, 200 pounds, 18 years old out of Slovakia, tallied 17 points in 27 games. For the Youngstown Phantoms, six goals and 11 assists in those 27 games after joining them late in the season, kind of like we saw Adam Guyon do. Those two, as you'll hear in a second, kind of have a lot of ties. Uh, and Mishak also recorded 19 points, uh, excuse me, 10 points, uh, one goal and nine assists in 29 professional games over in Slovakia before coming over to North America and joining Youngstown, where he actually wound up uh, helping them win the Clark Cup, the USHL Championship. So a good late addition for Youngstown was Martin Mishiak, and he also played with Adam Guyon, as I referenced, for Slovakia at the World Juniors this past year, another guy that probably got on the Blackhawks' radar there. Um, he played as a wing in Slovakia when he did play professional hockey, but was a center for Youngstown once he joined them. So we'll see how that kind of develops these next few years. Usually when you see that, it's probably going to end up him being a winger, but always love having the versatility to play all three forward positions. And for Misiak, although he's only 18 years old, he has racked up 75 games of professional experience the last two years while over in Slovakia. So kind of like Roman Kansarov, someone who the Blackhawks like seeing um, just playing with men already overseas. I do think there's always something to be said about that. As far as Pronman's analysis on Misiak, He's an NHL caliber athlete, six foot two, and he skates well. His strike is powerful. His stride, excuse me, is powerful and efficient. He showed he couldn't consistently push the pace versus men. The issue is how much does he offer outside his skating? I see some skill in offense, but I don't think his puck game and playmaking stand out. He's just okay off the puck as well. 
with some physicality, but he's not a great two-way forward. There's a lot to work with. I do think he should play games, but what he becomes as a pro is uncertain. And uh, yeah, it just seems like a player that the Blackhawks really liked for his size and the skating ability. I mentioned six foot two already, 200 pounds at just 18 years old, handled his own against grown men. Uh, And he was someone who got some second round rankings as well from some other scouts and analysts. He was ranked 62nd by Dauber Prospects, 72nd by Bob McKenzie, 73rd by Chris Peters, 81st by the Hockey News and McKean's Hockey. And then he was ranked all the way down at number 113 by the Daily Faceoff and 115th by Elite Prospects. So kind of all over the place here again. But listen, this is what we saw out of Paul Ludwinski, Gavin Hayes, even a little bit of Ryan Green in last year's draft in the second and third rounds as well. They look to be reaches at the time, but we really just got to see what these guys do in this next season. But uh, I do agree that the Blackhawks needed to add some size to their forward department as well. That's why even though they took Oliver Moore at number 19, which seemed like it absolutely had to be the pick, it is another undersized center. So I get adding Martin Misiak, a guy with some size who also has speed and can play against men. He's proven to be able to do that. And at only 18, there is still obviously some runway to work with. So it kind of felt like the Blackhawks maybe reached a little bit in round two with all three of their selections. But quite frankly, I don't mind that approach. They're going with players who they like uh, and trust have upside and At 18 years old, obviously, we don't really know what that is as of this point, but it could look very good in a year's time. Um, We'll see what these second round selections turn out to be. But again, for Kyle Davidson to get in there, in the Blackhawks opinion, the best goaltender in this draft to add a player with offensive instinct and someone who uh, put up good offensive numbers the last two years and Roman Kansarov, who could have been a late first round selection in some folks' eyes, along with a guy with size and speed who's already played 75 games against men and Martin Misiak. I think these were three pretty decent selections by the Blackhawks, but only time will truly tell if they wind up being worth the second round rating. The second round selection, I guess I should say. All right, Blackhawks fans, coming up in just a minute, I'll get into uh, the third and the fourth round picks that the Blackhawks made on day two. But first, real quick, I need to talk to you all about FanDuel. Go and make a fast break as FanDuel to FanDuel as baseball season is in full swing. And there's no better place to get in on the action than FanDuel, America's number one sports book. That's because right now, new customers can get a no sweat first bet up to $2,500. You just got to go to fanduel.com slash lockdown, place your first bet, and you'll get up to $2,500 back in bonus bets if your bet doesn't win. And I've been riding hot, fading the Kansas City Royals, the Cubbies. Been a little little hit and miss as of late. They were rolling for me recently. Big win for them yesterday over the Brewers. FanDuel has won me a lot of money throughout the course of baseball season. And don't miss out on your chance to get a no-sweat first bet up to $2,500 when you join FanDuel today. Just go to FanDuel.com slash LockedOn to sign up. FanDuel, an official sports betting partner of Major League Baseball. All right, we're back here on the Lockdown Blackhawks podcast, part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day. Real quick, if you haven't done so already, if you're still tuned in to this point of today's video, first, let me say thank you very much and make sure to go and smash that subscribe button for me if you could. Do me a huge favor. It only takes two seconds. It's 100% free. And also, if you do subscribe, I'm closing in on 1,000 subscribers. If you're subscribed to the YouTube channel, you'll have a chance to uh, enter the giveaway that I'm currently doing here on the show. I'll tell you more about that after our next ad break. So make sure to go and do that. Go and help show some support. I'm really trying to grow the show right now, uh, and I greatly appreciate all of the support out there. All right, picking up where I left off after the Blackhawks made three selections in the second round of the 2023 NHL draft. They were next on the clock at number 67, their first of two through uh, third round selections and they wound up taking maybe my personal favorite pick of day two in Nick Lardis, a five foot 11, 170 pound forward. Who's still only 17 years old. And he tallied 65 points, 37 goals and 28 assists and 69 combined games for the Peterborough Peets and the Hamilton Bulldogs of the Ontario hockey league last season. And he also added four points, all four being goals in seven games for team Canada at the world juniors. 
Um, kind of had a tale of two seasons. He started off really slow when he was still uh, a member of the Peterborough Peets. He only had 19 points in 36 games to open up the year. So Peterborough wound up trading him to Hamilton, and that's where he really started to click and want to show some of the upside that some people have talked about with Nick Lardis over the last couple of months. He had 46 points in 33 games with the Bulldogs, 25 goals, 21 assists in 33 games, nearly a goal per game player for Hamilton. Uh, And he's actually going to be playing for another OHL team next year in the Brantford Bulldogs. But basically the name of Nick Lardis' game is a lethal shooter with great motor, great skating abilities. Another good skater that the Blackhawks add to their forward pool here. It kind of seemed like, uh, at least in these earlier rounds before you get on to rounds like five through seven, uh, it really seemed like the Blackhawks were going after high-end skating. All of the forwards that they took here in the in these second and third rounds have that high-end skating ability. And Nick Lardis might be the best offensive prospect of the bunch here because – uh, he is obviously a really gifted goal scorer. We saw that at the World Juniors. We saw that with Hamilton, but there were just kind of some concerns about his size and his consistency that led him to become a third round pick here for the Blackhawks. When looking at the rankings here, I mean, Sportsnet had him ranked 27th. McKean's Hockey had him 32nd. He was 33rd by Elite Prospects, 34th by the Daily Faceoff. I mean, there were a lot of either late first round grades or high second round rankings here for Nick Lardis, uh, 50th by the Hockey News and Bob McKenzie, 65th by Craig Button. He was ranked the lowest by Chris Peters at 78th, but most of these guys, most of these scouts and analysts had Nick Lardis going well before number 67 here to the Blackhawks. So I thought it was an excellent value pick and Lardis was actually one of the guys uh, in those, you know, the top 40 that I was paying attention to, because that's kind of where I expected him to go. So I absolutely love this selection at number 67. I think there's a lot of runway and a lot of upside for a kid with high scoring ability, still only 17 years old, a good skater. I really like this pick by the Blackhawks. Getting into Pronman's analysis of Lardis, uh, he says his skating and skill are both assets for the pro game, and he has good scoring touch. He will be able to transition pucks up ice at higher levels. His shot is his best weapon as he's a threat to score from the dots. He can make some plays, but I wouldn't call him overly cerebral. Lardis is an undersized winger, though, with average compete, and I'm not so sure his talent, not so sure his talent enough will overcome those issues, but he has a chance because of his goal-scoring touch. I think it's worth a risk here at number 67 for the Blackhawks to take a chance on a player like Nick Lardis who I really thought was going to be long gone by this point in time. Personally, again, my favorite selection here in day two because there's so much upside there with Nick Lardis. Are there some concerns about the size of the compete? Absolutely, but if he can figure those things out, gain some weight, become a little bit more gritty, there's a lot to like with the offensive skill that he possesses as well. And then with their second third round selection at number 93, we saw the Blackhawks take Yuri Felkman, a six foot four, 200 pound forward, 18 years old from the Czech Republic, tallied 31 points, 10 goals, and 21 assists in 40 games for Langnau U20 last season in Switzerland. He also added two points in five games for the Czech Republic at the U18 World Juniors as well. Another guy that had a pretty solid showing there at the World Juniors that the Blackhawks wound up taking. Not a whole lot of breakdown here on Felkman, but this is where we saw the Blackhawks start to uh, go after some size. And I read that Felkman is actually a decent skater for being six foot four, 200 pounds. So uh, we'll see what move comes for him next. Um, but another overseas prospect here in the third round. And then with their first first selection in the fourth round at number 99, another player that I really like personally, the Blackhawks took Alex Ferrand, a six foot three, 200 pound forward, 18 years old, tallied 39 points, 18 goals and 21 assists in 67 games for the Sudbury Wolves of the Ontario Hockey League this past season. That's uh, the same junior team that we saw Isaac Phillips play with for a couple of years. Uh, And Ferrand also added one assist in seven games for Canada uh, at the world, the U18 world junior. So another player that we saw at the WJC, but Ferrand is a, is a player who can play a two way game uh, has some decent speed, some decent size, kind of um, ability to do a little bit of everything here. And uh, he's kind of bounced around from the Ontario hockey league. These last few years, he was traded from Peterborough, 
uh, to Sudbury recently, and I know he was actually part of another trade before that as well. Um, but it, from kind of reading the analysis, Fran plays a straightforward, disciplined game, high energy back checking, physical forechecking, proactive defensive zone positioning, and intelligent off puck routes in the offensive zone. Fran chains pass receptions with deeks and shots, hesitation moves, and handling fakes, frees defenders, which he often uses to prepare passing lanes. He overwhelms opponents along the boards, escapes, then drives inside. And this is someone who I think as a fourth round pick, because of uh, the physicality, the skating, the hard forechecking, the tenacity on the defensive side of things, along with, you know, a decent offensive game, I wouldn't expect him ever to be a huge playmaker or impact offensive player at the NHL level, but it kind of sounds like Alex Brand has the making and kind of the uh, mentality in, in the game, the game that'll translate to being kind of a bottom six forward at the NHL level. So I'm kind of intrigued by this addition of Alex Ferrand here, a guy with some really good size at 18 years old, has shown a willingness to compete in the dirty areas along the boards, on the four check, on the back check, adding some more size to the prospect pool here in the forward position, and maybe not necessarily focusing on the offensive upside here, but someone who could be a good role player potentially down the road, I think is a smart idea by general manager Kyle Davidson as well. Yeah. You want uh, some good high offense offensive players who can score a lot of goals, but we already kind of have that in Connor Bedard and Oliver Moore and all the first round picks that we're adding the first round picks that we've already selected. Uh, I think it's a smart path for Kyle Davidson to take by kind of rounding things out and going with a, a player who can make an impact in a different way here in Alex Ferrand at number 99. All right, folks, coming up in just a moment, I will wrap things up by getting into the Blackhawks final three picks in the 2023 NHL draft. All right, before I wrap up today's show, I do want to let you all know about the giveaway that I'm doing here on Locked On Blackhawks, as I referenced uh, right before segment two. Help me out. I'm currently on the path to reaching 1,000 subscribers on YouTube. I'm really close at this point in time. And even once I do reach 1,000, I want to continue to grow the channel. So make sure to go and smash that subscribe button if you haven't done so already. And once I do reach 1,000 subscribers, which I expect to happen probably today, um, I'm going to let this happen for the next couple of weeks, but I am going to be having a giveaway here on Locked On Blackhawks in celebration of reaching 1,000 subscribers. And all you need to do to enter this giveaway is you need to subscribe to Locked On Blackhawks on YouTube, follow Locked On Blackhawks on Instagram, and then just DM Locked On Blackhawks with a screenshot that shows you're subscribed to the YouTube channel. Those three easy things are all you have to do. I also just posted uh, pictures on the Locked On Blackhawks Instagram channel of some of the things that will be involved in the giveaway. And the lucky winner will be able to select one item of their choosing. So make sure to go and do that real fast, folks, to help grow the channel and to have an opportunity to win some cool free Blackhawks stuff. All right, getting into the final three selections that we saw the Blackhawks make in this 2023 NHL draft. Fan favorite here at number 31 with their lone fifth round selection. And it wound up being the best name of the draft, probably, folks, in Marcel Marcel. That's right. The Blackhawks drafted forward Marcel Marcel, a beefcake, six foot three, 243 pounds. And he's absolutely hilarious. The Blackhawks prospects are in Chicago at this point in time for uh, the development camp that they're holding this year, but it is unfortunately all off the ice, which is quite unfortunate that we don't get an early look here at Connor Bedard on the ice and uh, the development cap has always been one of my favorite things during the summer. So for them to take that away from us, I was a little bit heartbroken at the same time. It does make sense with kind of the summer regimens of all of these players, but nonetheless, all of these prospects or most of them uh, are in Chicago right now. They've been doing some cool things around the city, throwing out the first pitch at Wrigley doing some boat tours, and it looked like uh, enjoying the 4th of July together while they're all in town. But we've heard and had interviews from numerous amount of these prospects, or from all of these prospects now, basically. And Marcel Marcel is by far the funniest. I mean, his interview with Ben Pope and uh, Phil Thompson are the two that have written it up, where he's talking about how he got drafted and he was on the toilet, talking about getting suspended in the QMJHL. I would definitely recommend 
going and reading that if you haven't done so, because Marcel Marcel is absolutely hilarious, but he's also got some game here for being a uh, six foot four, 243 pound, 19 year old forward out of the Czech Republic. He actually tallied uh, 32 points, 14 goals and 18 assists and 52 QMJHL games for the Gatineau Olympiques this past season. That team may sound familiar to you as well. That's where current Blackhawks prospect Sam Savoy has played for the last couple of years now. So I'm sure the Blackhawks got a pretty good look at Marcel Marcel playing with Savoy this past season. Uh, he also tallied six points in seven games for the Czech Republic at the U-20 World Juniors as well. Two goals and four assists, so a strong showing for Marcel Marcel there. Uh, he also played 18 games in Czech's uh, top professional league during the 2021-2022 season, tallying one assist and was a point-per-game player that same season in the Czechs U-20 league. Um, I've read that Marcel Marcel is actually a pretty good skater for a guy of his size. Put up decent QMJHL numbers. I know he's already 19 years old and an overager. He's another guy who's never going to be known for his offense. But if he can keep up at that size and maybe provide a little bit of physicality along with it. There's going to be a chance for Marcel Marcel, and it'll be very fun to watch him play for Gatineau this season, along with uh, Samuel Savoy as both of them are headed back to that club for this year. And then at number 167, that's the, the pick that the Blackhawks received from uh, the Philadelphia Flyers earlier on in the draft. They wound up taking another big boy in Milton Oscarson, six foot six. 250 pound forward, 20 years old out of Sweden. Tally three points, one goal, and two assists in 45 SHL games this past season, which is the top professional league over in Sweden. So another guy who, look, you're just taking a little bit of a chance on here in the later round, but already has some good experience playing against men and obviously has the size to go along with it. Uh, six foot six, 215 pounds. I don't know if he's going to be able to keep up. I don't really know much about Milton Osterson, but we've seen the Blackhawks and Kyle Davidson go this route each of the past two years now. We saw them take Riku Tohila uh, with their seventh round selection last year, like a 6'7 forward from a village in Finland. Uh, Kyle Davidson's risking, uh, willing to take a risk uh, on some of these bigger guys who um, are a little bit of an unknown at this point. But look, if you cash in kind of like the goaltender, um, draft uh, picks that the Blackhawks have stockpiled. If you get one of these big boys who can skate at an NHL level somewhere down the road, if they figure that out, I mean, you, you, I'm not comparing Milton Oscarson here to Tage Thompson, but there is something to be said about that mold of a player that can keep up. Uh, there, there's upside there. I don't know if it's ever going to work out, but this is again, a risk that we've seen Kyle Davidson wanting to take here in the later rounds drafting six foot six Milton Oscarson in the sixth round. And then with their lone seventh round selection at number 195 to round things out, we saw the Blackhawks take Yanni Peltonen, defenseman, uh, six foot two, 175 pounds, left-handed out of Finland, played uh, in 40 games for Carpats U-20 program this past season, tallying three goals and six assists, is expected to play in Finland's Liga next year, which is the top professional league over in Finland. So again, another late round pick, a guy that's going to be playing against pros. Uh, Peltonen, interestingly enough, was the only defenseman we saw the Blackhawks go after in this year's draft. I personally thought the Blackhawks were going to go after a right-handed defenseman in the second or third round. So I was a little shocked that they didn't go that route, but they certainly stockpiled some speed uh, to their forward position with Roman Kansarov, uh, Nick Lardis, and Martin Mishiak. And then they also added some size in Alex Ferrand, uh, Marcel Marcel, and Milton Oscars. And I think uh, Ferrand, excuse me, is the player who undoubtedly has the best chance of becoming an NHL or for the Blackhawks. But I, I do think there's something to be said about what Kyle Davidson has done in these later rounds, going after some bigger boys. And apparently Marcel Marcel can actually skate decently well. So we'll see if anything turns up from these later rounds in the 2023 NHL draft. But all in all, I really liked how, look, whatever Adam Guyana is going to be, the Blackhawks were clearly super high on him and confident enough to make him the first goaltender off the board in this year's draft. So in their mind, again, they got the best goaltender, the best skater in Oliver Moore, and the best player in Connor Bedard. I also thought Nick Lardis at 67 was a absolute no-brainer 
Roman Kansarov is someone from over in Russia who's been a point per game player in the MHL these last two years has a, a high pace and a good offensive skill game around side it. Some people had him as a first round ranking. I think Martin Misiak is a good combination of size and some speed. So all in all, I thought the Blackhawks took some stabs here on day two. That's kind of what we saw them do last year. And thus far, one year removed from the 2022 NHL draft, it's worked out pretty well for Kyle Davidson. So hopefully we'll be saying the same a year later, looking back at this entire 2023 draft class in which the Blackhawks made 11 picks. All right, folks, I think that is going to wrap up Wednesday, July 5th episode of Lockdown Blackhawks. As always, thank you all again for tuning into the show and be sure to go and subscribe to the YouTube channel right now and to go and follow Lockdown Blackhawks for free wherever you may be listening to your podcasts. As always, I'm your host, Jack Bushman. Find me out on Twitter at Jack Bushman 2 or you could also go and check out my Strictly Blackhawks account at Talk and Hockey for all the latest Blackhawks news and updates. So until tomorrow's episode, that's going to do it here for the Lockdown Blackhawks podcast, part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day.